The very first videos I put on YouTube two and a half years ago was the making of these countertops. I have a few problems and we're going to fix them today. Let me explain what's going on. When I originally made these countertops, when we pulled them from the forms, there were some air pockets that created voids in the surface of the countertop. I filled those voids with a slurry of grout using a Portland based grout and after two and a half years some of that has come out and it has revealed the voids that the air pockets created so we're going to get these cleaned up we're going to get a new slurry mixed up I have a different material I'm going to use this time from Chang it is a slurry an acrylic based slurry we'll talk about that in a little bit but first we just want to get these things cleaned up and get them ready to go Hi everybody, I'm Jim Deardorff and this is Detroit DIY. Let's scrub these things down. I've got some soapy water mixed up. It's warm water, a little bit of soap in it. Dish soap, not too much. I wanted to use the dish soap because if there's any greasy film or anything on here that it'll remove it. I've got a little scrub brush. I've got a toothbrush in case I need to get into any of these. I'll show these better once I get it cleaned up. I did this little section right here just to see what would work and it deglossed it a little bit and I think it's going to make it easier to see the voids and I've got some toothpicks if I need to help me clean out any of these little pockets. So first let's just get it sprayed down a little bit. Scrub away. Thankfully, most of the problems seem to be concentrated in this area right here and any of the voids that I can see I just kind of want to go through and give them a good little scrubbing with this toothbrush and I'm hoping that any debris that has gotten in them is going to be more willing to come out I can see one right here that's being a little stubborn so we're going to go ahead and run the toothpick in it a little bit. Got a little something going on here. I'm not sure what it is. If it's an excess of sealer or what it is but before I reseal them and put the counter shine back on them they will get a light sanding with some 220 grit I'm hopeful that the sealer is still on here good enough that the slurry I'm going to use doesn't create staining so I want to be careful of that I don't want a ton of staining we like the color. I'm going to keep going with this. I am finding some here with some debris in them. And I am just going to continue cleaning them out. Just get this as clean as I possibly can. So that the slurry fills the holes and there's not junk in them. I've scrubbed it and rinsed it three times now and I just want to get all this cleaned off once again and then I'm going to let it dry over just a little bit so I can have a better idea of what I'm looking at. It's a little hard to see 
when it's all wet and glazed over. Just to make sure that I have all of the air pockets cleaned out or the voids cleaned out of any debris that's gotten in them and then we will be ready to start putting some slurry in. Now that I've got the soap off, I'm going to go ahead and just rinse my rag a couple more times, clean over it, make sure I have all the soap residue off. Anything I see that doesn't look right, like there's there's something on the countertop right here and there's a little something right here. I think I'm going to grab some 220 grit sandpaper and just lightly get that out of my way. So right now I just want to get some paper up. I got a little bit on the floor. I just want to get some paper up here so if I slob anything I'm not making a mess. Oliver is here helping me. If you don't have an Oliver in your life, you need to get one. Every time I do a project, he's right there, curious, sticks his head in the way of my head sometimes. He's a good boy. just a little bit of water here I want to tape the edge of the sink so that I'm not getting anything on it I think currently that's all I need. I see some open voids back here, but I don't see anything back that way. I'm going to move this camera around and see if there's any way that we can get a better look at some of the worst area of voids that have opened back up. I believe we can see them. We've got a pretty good sized one here and here, a couple of decent sized ones right here. But the most of these are small. There we go, we can see them pretty good right there. So this is what I'm dealing with. And like I say in the beginning, I filled these with a slurry of Portland-based grout. And it has come out over the last two and a half years. There's still other areas, like right here, that is still filled. And I see some other areas, like these little darker spots, I believe are areas that are still filled. So I'm not going to worry too much about them, but any of these open voids, I want to get them refilled. 
I'm going to be filling these voids with Chang Pro Formula Acrylic Slurry. This is intended to fill these air pocket voids in countertops, so I'm hopeful that it holds on longer than three years. It says to mix this up as the consistency of toothpaste. I am not going to mix the whole box at once because I don't need that much. If I do need a little bit more, then I'll mix a little bit more. It says to let it dry for one day. If there's any shrinking that develops and it becomes a low spot, then to go ahead and do it again. And they should turn out pretty flat. So I am going to get some of this mixed up, toothpaste consistency. And we're going to start getting it in here. I have a small amount of the slurry in a screw container. And we're going to mix it up. I have a piece of a skewer here. We're just going to add a little bit of water at a time until we get it to that toothpaste consistency. I have a plastic putty knife here to assist me with removal and some rubber gloves because I am going to put this in with my fingers. Rub it around. and then scrape any excess off. I think I'm getting really close to this toothpaste consistency we're looking for. I might be a little bit thick. Now it also says to keep the countertop damp as you work. So these countertops are already sealed so they should not steal all the moisture right out of this slurry at least i'm hopeful that they don't i am going to go ahead and just put a real light wipe on them with the rag and go from there here's what i've got i'm thinking that's pretty close to a toothpaste consistency. So I'm going to start in this area right here. So I'm just going to kind of take my rag and I don't want to soak it, but I want to get it damp. And they suggest using a spray bottle, which I could understand if I wasn't sealed. I'm afraid that if I spray water on here it's just going to be too much and what it's going to do is dilute the slurry or add a bunch of water to the slurry that I don't want added to it. Alright, I've got this area nice and damp and we're going to start right here. So with my fingers I'm just going to dig in. I'm going to get a little bit of this and we are just going to start pushing it in these voids and get them filled up. And they seem to be filling readily, which is nice. When I did it, this with the grout, they did not fill readily. They looked like they did, but they bridged over. I can say this, I like how easily the voids are filling in.
see this larger void that was right here is already has a little dip in it I'm going to put just a little extra on there in about 10 minutes or so I'm going to go over it with this putty knife and start scraping the excess off going to get this area damp and continue on getting some of these filled up. I really like how this just goes right in the void. I remember when I did this with the grout, the Portland grout, man it just did not want to go in. You would think it was and then you'd clean it all off and see that you had only got maybe a quarter of the voids filled so it took multiple times that does not seem like it's going to be the case here This is starting to haze over and become somewhat dry. I'm going to give it a few more minutes and then I'm going to get it with the putty knife and give it a good scrape off. So now with the entire thing coated, I just want to go through and remove the excess. And I just want to say the whole thing wasn't full of air bubbles. The reason I put the slurry on the whole thing is because if there is any staining, I want it to be stained equal. That way the colors stay consistent, everything stays consistent. And it just won't change the looks of things that much. What I'm scraping off almost looks like more than I mixed in the first place. I've got a little bit of this slurry on my backsplash here and I just want to go ahead and get that cleaned up, clean up the edges a little bit. I bumped it down here in a spot or two also. Get that. There we go. All right, now we gotta wait for this to dry approximately a day. It's been 24 hours now, I'm just gonna take a wet rag and I am going to wipe off any of the hazing, anything that I can get off. 
Once I get it thoroughly cleaned, I'm going to go over it again, just like we did earlier, and get any of the air pockets that I didn't get filled up, and level off any of them that are not completely smooth. So I'm going to keep cleaning this up, and we'll come back and look at it once I get it all finished. I have all the hazing cleaned off, but there's still some low spots, and there's a couple of small areas that did not get filled up. So I have some more slurry mixed up and I'm going to go over it again. This basically is just going to repeat the process of yesterday. Same thing, I'm just going to rub it in real good, get it in those pockets, and then scrape it off with the putty knife once it hazes over. All right, I'm going to keep going and we'll come back when I'm ready to clean the hazing off in 24 hours get it sanded and prep it for sealer and polish. The second coat of slurry has been drying for another 24 hours and we're ready to clean it up. I'm going to do the same thing with a damp rag and I'm just going to go over and I'm going to scrub this whole thing down as good as I can and then we're going to get another process going on to even clean it further. So I'll get this cleaned off and then we'll come back and show you the next step. Now that I have as much of the residual off as I can currently get off, it still needs more, but we're close. I'm going to use some triple ot steel wool. This is not not the finest, but one step above the finest. And I'm going to hit it with some soapy water and, and just give it a scrub with the soapy water and the steel wool just to help get anything else off that needs to come loose. Some of these areas where I believe something stuck to it right here, we're going to get that. I'm going to go over this whole thing thoroughly with this, and then we will be ready to give it another thorough wipe down, and then we'll need to let it dry. I've finished scrubbing it down with the steel wool and the soapy water and now we just need to wait for it to dry but you can see here this is the area where I had all my issues this being one of the bigger voids that I pointed out kind of why I wanted to do this now while the water's on here and you have some gloss that stands out a little bit better this being another one of the voids right here they filled in very nice. They're nice and flush. I did find one over here that's got a little bit of a dip to it, but that's okay. They're not open voids. And I look at it and I see that most every void that was here has been filled in. And some of them are a little dimpled, but like I say, I'm not gonna worry about that. They're closed up. I'm going to be resealing this with the same thing I used the first time, which is the Countertop Solutions Cyacryl 14. It is a water-based acrylic sealer, and it has worked very good. In fact, it is still repelling water as we speak. When I just wiped it down, it was bubbling in some places and not just laying flat. You could tell it still had an active sealer here. Upon their recommendations, I am going to scuff this with 220 grit sandpaper before I put the new coat of sealer and polish on this section of countertop. So that's what we're going to do next, is we're just going to give this thing a real light sanding with some 220 grit sandpaper and get it scuffed up to accept the new sealer. I am not trying to remove tons of material, very light pressure, let the sandpaper do the work. I just want to scuff it. As you can see as I'm scuffing it, it is just creating a light powder. That is exactly what I want. I'm going to go over the whole thing and do that wipe it down with water again, let it dry, then we'll be ready for sealer. Everything is dry, I've got everything masked off, and I'm almost ready to get some sealer on here, but first we need to use a tack rag, 
go up, clean up anything that might be on here, any little lumps, clumps, hair, or whatever may have gotten on here, and get it all cleaned off. You can get tack rags anywhere, big box stores, your local hardware store. They're in the paint department, and they're basically just a sticky rag that will collect up anything that's on the surface. Let's get this wiped down. With the tack rag out of the package, we are just going to give it a thorough wipe down. Once I wipe it good with one side, I'm going to go ahead and flip it and wipe it with the other side. We don't have a ton of stuff, just a little bit, which is good. With everything wiped down with the tack rag, we're ready to get some sealer on. And we are using Cyacro 14 or Z Cyacro 14 from Countertop Solutions. This is an excellent product, held up well. I was really happy with it. Unfortunately, it's the slurry that I made up that caused me my problems, not the sealer or the shine. So we're gonna get this down. We're gonna be using a microfiber 3 8 nap roller and a foam brush for some of the very small areas and to get around the sink. A small amount of this goes a long way, so I am not going to put a ton in here. I am going to put about five coats. I need to wait one hour between each coat. I'm going to start with this foam brush and go around the edges of the sink and get all of that done. What you don't want to do is leave puddles. Now that I've got around the sink done, we are ready to get some on this roller. And start rolling it on. I'm going to roll this several times, keeping it wet and just moving it around. And just work it into the surface. Now that I have the whole thing coated, I'm just going to keep working it in multiple directions. Get rid of any of this puddling. I also sanded the face and cleaned it up, so I, I, I want to get a coat on that as well. Okay, I've got it all coated. I'm going to let it dry for an hour and another coat and the same thing. Like I say, I want to put about five coats on it. So once I get that done, then I'll wait till tomorrow and we're going to get some polish on this. The Cyacro 14 is dry. I've put six coats and it is dry and it is ready for counter shine. This is also from Countertop Solutions. This is Z Countershine and it is compatible with the Cyacro 14. 
and I'm going to apply it the same way. Thin layers, I'm going to put three or four coats of this. I've put six coats of the sealer. I'm really happy with what I've got. It feels nice and smooth. It looks really good. And we are going to get this on right now. I'm going to apply this the same way that I applied the sealer with a microfiber roller. And what this is going to do is it's going to add layers of protection and it is going to bring out the gloss in the countertop so when this is done it will look amazing if you can see it right here we have some separation going on where it looks like it doesn't want to take it we just kind of need to roll it a little bit and get it to accept the surface after you roll it a few times roll over it and just keep rolling over it it will stop doing that as you can see it's already stopped doing that and it is accepting the coat and not repelling it I'm going to use the foam brush around the sink just like I did with the sealer and I'll use the foam brush on the lip of the countertop also it does not take a lot to coat this I mean this is basically I soaked this roller good one time and there's going to be enough here possibly more than enough to coat this piece of countertop Alright, I'm going to finish, trim up around the sink with the foam brush, get this rolled in really good. And then when I'm finished, like I said, I'm going to put three or four coats. We will take a look at the finished product. I have four coats of counter shine on here and I am extremely happy with what I've got. As you can see, the gloss is amazing. It is not fully cured, but it is dry to the touch. So we will just give it overnight to cure up and uh, put this thing back in service. I couldn't be happier with the Concrete Countertop Solution Cyacryl 14 and Countershine. These are both amazing products. Check out my playlist on Concrete Countertops. There's complete tutorials on making concrete countertops, building the forms. It's in depth and it will get you on your way to making your own concrete countertops. That's all we got for this time. If you enjoyed yourself, click on one of those two videos that are going to pop up next to me. And always remember to respect the power of your power tools. We'll see you soon.